Okay, it's vlog two at Passionate with a Purpose. This week we are in Matthew chapter 14, and we're going to be talking about one of my favorite biblical uh, persons. I hate to say character because they were a person, um, John the Baptist. And what I wanted to do, as you can tell from my massive layout here, I've been studying because it's been a while since we looked at John the Baptist, probably two months or more. So I just want to go back and recap what we know about John the Baptist so that when we read today's text about him, we'll really just understand it better. So I think one of the reasons that I love John the Baptist so much is that in the beginning, in the middle, and even at the drama of his death, his whole story is fascinating. It just entices you to want to just love him and know him and, and, and understand him more. Um, even Jesus said this about him in Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. Let me find it. It says, Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there is not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. John the Baptist, even Jesus spoke highly of him. So we're going to recap, and I have notes everywhere and books everywhere, so just try to hang with me. Um, we know who his parents are. They were Zechariah and Elizabeth. We know that Zechariah was a priest. Depending on what translation you have, his name might have been Zacharias, um, or a little bit different, but similar enough, we're going to call him Zechariah. We know that they um, were godly men and women. It says that they followed the commandments of God, and that in their old age, they didn't have any children. And um, Gabriel came, the angel Gabriel came to Zechariah and told him that they were going to have a son, um, that he was going to be great, and that he, all the things that John was going to do. And Zechariah uh, didn't necessarily believe that that was going to happen, and his unbelief caused him to become mute until the day of John's birth. But when he finally did speak after John's birth, he said some pretty amazing things. And you're going to find them in Luke chapter 1. It's verse 76 through 79. I'm going to flip over there and it says, and you child, he is speaking to John the Baptist, his father speaking to his son, said, and you child will be called the prophet of the highest for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Um, that was a pretty major statement for him to say about his son. I think that um, time of being mute I, and seeing the things that the angel spoke come to pass um, made him full of faith. Um, some of the other things that we know is that Isaiah prophesied the message that John would speak. And that was even hundreds of years before it came to pass that this prophet said that, that John was coming and what he would speak. We're going to find that in Isaiah chapter 40, um, 3 through 5. Let's find it here. It says, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked place shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And so as it was foretold, John did preach in the desert. We know that he dressed in camel's hair. He ate um, honey and locusts, and he preached some hard sermons to anybody who would listen. Um, we want to remember that when John came to the picture, it had been 400 years since the last prophet, which would have been Malachi. 400 years of science. This period of time is called the intertestamental period. Whew, hard to say. Um, where there was no prophet. There was no one speaking the direct word of God. So all of a sudden, John comes on the scene, and, and nobody's been speaking these words, and he comes on. I think that was like a hard pill for people to swallow, because it had been a while. And uh, so we're going to have a look at Matthew 3.11, because that did, everything that Isaiah prophesied did come to pass. And if you'll flip over back to uh, Matthew verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 11, it says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, 
whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So John knew his purpose. He knew his ministry. And he knew that this, this one, this Messiah that was coming, he wasn't even worthy to lace his shoe. But yet, on a day, which I imagine might have been like the greatest day of his life on this earth, Jesus came to him at the Jordan River and had John the Baptist baptize him. That was pretty amazing. We know that John uh, spent his ministry declaring, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so now we're in his ministry and we are at our text, which is in Matthew 14. We're going to read 1 through 5. Our whole text is 1 through 12, but we're going to read 1 through 5 first. Maybe we are, if I can find it. Okay. At the time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the report about Jesus and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore these powers are at work in him. For Herod had laid hold of John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. Because John had said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. And although he wanted to put him to death, he did fear the multitude, because they counted him as a prophet. So, I want to point out just a couple of facts, first of all, that this was Herod Antipas, not his father, Herod the Great. Um, he was already gone. So I just want to clarify that there are a couple of Herods, but this is Herod Antipas. Um, we know that John died for the message that he preached, and he didn't hold anything back. And I'm thankful to sit under a pastor who preaches the word of God without fear. I know a lot of y'all um, that are from other churches, y'all sit under great men of God also, and I am thankful for that, that there are men of God still, like John the Baptist, serving on the earth today. Um, we know that he did not hold back from telling Herod that what he was doing was a sin, that it was immoral, and that it wasn't right. So we're going to take a look at what it was that Herod was doing. Um, the Bible says that, that he was having an immoral relationship with his wife. Now, we need to have a look at Leviticus chapter 16 because we need to know a couple of things. First of all, his wife, Herodias, was his brother Philip's wife that he convinced to leave his brother and marry him. Now, if we look in the book of law, of, of the laws, in Leviticus chapter 18, let's find it here, verse 16, it says, You shall not uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife. It is your brother's nakedness. And also in chapter 20, verse 21, let's find it here. It says, If a man takes his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness, and they shall be childless. It was already established in the law that this was not right. So John was not preaching something that he didn't know to be true. The law stated it. John just declared it. Um, and I don't know about you, but when I think about this story, it's like the days of our life or something because... I mean, this is like a drama. I mean, his brother's wife, someone coming in and telling him you're doing it wrong, and they get mad. It just happened to be that they were uh, important people who could have somebody put to death. So um, this whole thing that John declared to Herod did not sit well with his wife Herodias. She was pretty angry, and she devised a plan. So um, this is going to happen on Herod's birthday, and we're still in our text. It's Matthew chapter 14. It's the end of our text, 6 through 11. And it says, But when Herod's birthday was celebrated, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Therefore he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. So she, having been prompted by her mother, who was Herodias, said, Give me John the Baptist's head here on a platter. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, because of the oaths and because of those who sat with him, he commanded it to be given to her. So he sent and had John beheaded in prison, and his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother. Then the disciples came and took away the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. Now, if you like history like I do, you will want to know when this happened, and this is about 32 A.D. Um, and this is the end of John the Baptist's life. He had a great ministry. He declared the word of the Lord. 
He fulfilled his purpose here on earth and we know that he is in heaven with the Father and the Son now. And so that is an exciting text, just seeing that even to the end, he didn't back down from the truth of the gospel. So I'm excited about this week. We have a lot going on. Um, we have a couple of guest writers. Well, actually, every day this week is um, guest writers. Um, tomorrow, we have Mitchell Sanchez. Um, Wednesday, we have Brother Fran Gilmore. Um, Thursday, we have Naomi Chance. And then Friday, which I'm really excited about, is Naomi's daughter, Jane. And um, we are going to be in chapter 14 and 15 of Matthew this week. So y'all get in the word, study it up, and then follow along on the blog. And keep me posted about what you're learning. And I look forward to seeing you next Monday.